Hello, and welcome to the third in my series on performing complex refactoring in simple steps. In the last episode, we took a piece of conditional logic, decomposed the conditional to make sense of what was going on, and extracted three classes as method objects to encapsulate the behaviour of each of these branches. In this episode, we're going to continue the journey to polymorphism. Here is the postage in base currency method of the package class that we were looking at. You can see that we create a small, a medium, or a large package as part of the implementation. And on each of these, we then call postage in base currency. When I look at this, I see duplicated logic. I'd like to separate the creation of the package from the invocation of the postage in base currency method. But I can't do that quite yet because the compiler doesn't know that small package, medium and package and large package can be treated in the same way. In a more dynamically typed language like JavaScript, this wouldn't be a problem. We could use duck typing. We could just say, as long as they've got the same name method, we can use them. But in a statically typed language like C Sharp, we need to introduce an abstraction. So before we refactor this piece of code, we're going to create an interface as an abstraction on these three classes. Before I get started, I run all my tests, make sure that I'm green. Then I'm going to find the small package class and I'm going to extract an interface on this. I'm not a huge fan of starting my interfaces with an I, so I'm going to find a name that describes this that doesn't need an I at the beginning. My first attempt would just be the name package, that we already have a package class. This sets off a little alarm bell in my brain. We have two things representing possibly the same concept. I want to complete the refactoring before I address this, but this is something that I would probably write on an index card and put by the side of my keyboard and come back to it once I'd finished the refactoring to see if I could improve it further. So we've rejected the word package. What can we call this? Well, I noticed that something salient about the three classes we're looking at is they all have a size. So I'm going to call this sized package. And I'm going to extract its public method. Here we go. Run my tests again. So my small package now implements the interface. I'm going to make my medium package implement the interface as well. And at this point, I get some red squigglies. Something is wrong. And if I look a little further down, I can see that the postage in base currency method on medium package is returning an integer, whereas small package, and now my interface, are returning decimal. So I'm going to change this. Run my test again. That's fine, I haven't broken anything with that small change. And then I'm going to find my large package. And I'm going to make that implement this interface as well. Perfect. So now my three classes are related. They are all implementations of the same abstraction. This gives me the flexibility to do the next step. Back to the method on our package class. As I said, what I would like to do is separate the object creation from the invocation of the postage in base currency method. Now, it is possible to do this incrementally, but it is very, very fiddly. So instead, I'm going to go slightly against the advice I gave earlier, and I'm going to take a slight sidestep. First of all, I'm going to extract a method on this, which I'm going to call create sized package for the time being. I'm going to put everything in it. 
This feels like a completely pointless method right now, but the next step I'm going to perform is going to make it more useful. So I'm going to take my first invocation, I'm going to cut and paste. And you can see that I'm failing to compile. This is not a good situation to be in, so I need to take a step ASAP to fix it. And to do that, I'm going to turn, I'm going to change the return type of create size package to that size package interface. I've made one step on compilation failure. I then look at the next issue and we can see that this is because I'm invoking postage in base currency on my medium package. So I'll remove that, the second step on compilation failure. And finally, I will do the same with the large package. Third step on compilation failure. And now I can run my tests and they all pass green. So this was a slightly dangerous manoeuvre. If you think back to the crocodiles in the first episode, they were definitely nibbling at my toes. But I was very clear throughout this manoeuvre what I was doing. And now I'm back to green. I haven't actually written any new code. I've just massaged it a little bit. So the next step is to look at postage and base currency that we have now and spot what's going on here. Well, I've now got two responsibilities in this class. One of them is for the creation of the size package and one of them is for the invocation of the postage in base currency method. It seems to me that the size package is actually a collaborator here. And I like to set up my collaborators in the constructor of a class. I'm going to convert this to a field. I'm going to call it size package. I'm going to initialize it in the constructor and I can make it read only. I run my tests and they all pass. And now I'm fairly happy with the implementation of this method, at least for the moment. We will come back to it later because there is a smell beginning to make itself felt here. Instead, I want to look up in the constructor and in particular, at these four dimensions, you can see that depth is used in the create size package and the is medium and is small methods. Width is the same, height is the same, weight is the same. There are various smells here. And the one I want to pick up on is the temporary field smell. We're setting these values and only using them inside the constructor as part of the creation of the size package. And then we don't worry about them anymore. I'm not very happy about this. I'd like to get rid of it. And in order to do this, I'm going to have to remove the reliance of these three related methods on my fields. Let's start with the is small method. I have two options here. I can pop each of these parameters out. We did that when we were creating our method objects. Or I can make this method static, which will have a similar effect. So I'm going to choose this. And I'm going to ask it to introduce parameters from these following expressions. Click next. You will see the parameters have been introduced. I run my tests and they're green. We will do the same with his medium. Introduce the parameters from the following expressions, weight, height, width, depth. Click next. Run my tests. And finally, we will do this with create size package. Exactly the same manoeuvre. Introduce parameters, depth, width, height, weight. Click next and go. And you'll see now that I'm getting a warning 
on my fields. What does it say? It says the field is always assigned before being used and can be converted to a local variable. So I can fix this by inlining each of my fields. And my tests pass. My package is beginning to look a little cleaner. I only have one field on it now rather than those five that we had a minute ago. But it still has two responsibilities. It's responsible for knowing how to create this sized package and then for invoking postage-in-based currency. I don't feel that create size package actually belongs on here. Let's think for a moment about what type of method it is. It's got the word create in its name, which is a telltale sign that this is some sort of factory method. There are various different types of factory pattern. And the one that I feel is most appropriate here is the static factory method which can be located on an abstraction and which gives you a handy way of creating implementations of that abstraction. So I'd like to do this, but I can't right now because size package is currently an interface. This is very easy to fix. I can just choose convert interface to abstract class and we can see size package becomes an abstract class and we get override keywords on our subclasses. So having done that, run our tests, I can now move my factory method and the methods it depends on to sized package. I'm going to select all three I'm going to declare them as public. This is a bit annoying. I don't need to make his medium and his small public, but I can't set specific access rights for the different methods. So I'll just choose this, run my tests, and find it. And you can see I've got these two public methods, which I can make private, and run my tests again. If I look back at my package now, I can see that it's much smaller. The first thing I'd like to notice is the naming of this factory method. I've got size package equals size package create size package. This is very repetitive and doesn't really tell me what's going on. A great thing about static factory methods is that we can make them more descriptive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename the method and I'm going to call this with dimensions. So now my line reads size package equals size package with dimensions, weight, height, width, and depth. I'm creating a mini domain specific language here, which describes what's going on in my code. I'm still not entirely happy with this package class. First thing I noticed about this line is that I'm violating the dependency inversion principle. My package class is responsible for knowing how to create its dependency, how to create its collaborator. If I have a quick look, I can find the package is only used in one place and I control that. So what I want to do is pass this in as a dependency rather than initializing it inside the constructor. I can check this works. And then I can remove the unneeded parameters. Having done this, I have another look at my package class. And I realize that it's not really doing anything. It takes a size package collaborator and then in its public method, all it does is invoke a similarly named method on the collaborator. You've got a classic case of the middleman smell here. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go to the usage of this, have a quick look. 
Well, I have my size package available here. I know that it has a postage in base currency method. So I'm just going to remove the package altogether. Check it works, which it does. And now I can see that my package class isn't needed anymore. I can delete it. Perfect. So a little while ago, I wrote myself a note to say, think about the naming of sized package. I really wanted to call it package, but I already had a class with that name. Now I've just deleted that class. And so I can rename size package to package. And if I have a look at my calculator now, I can see that I'm calculating my postage in base currency by creating a package with these dimensions and invoking that method on it. I think I'm just going to extract a variable here in order to clarify what's going on. But I'm pretty happy with the result of this refactoring. So to recap, we spotted that we had three classes that were doing pretty much the same thing. We formalized their relationship by creating an interface as an abstraction on the behavior. We then split the creation of these implementations of the abstraction from the invocation of that behavior. We moved that factory method onto an abstract class. And then we recognized that the package class we originally had had become a middleman. And we got rid of it. And now we have an abstract package class. We have a small package implementation, a medium package implementation, and a large package implementation. And our calculator just knows about the abstraction. It doesn't know any of the rest of the details. So we've completed the refactoring from conditional to polymorphism. I hope you found this interesting. There's still more work to do on this code sample. You will see another conditional statement further down this page. So join me again and we'll tackle that. See you then.